the first thing I'm going to do to condition it, I don't want to break my wrist. I could start wedging it, but it'll just really hurt my wrist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using my thumb to pull it apart. This will loosen it up. It'll still be a little stiff, but it'll help to loosen it up a little bit. Now I can tell it's still very stiff clay. I have a little bit of clay that um, is a little softer. See how it's softer? And I'm going to mix that in just a little bit, and that'll help soften the clay as well. We want the clay nice and conditioned. We don't want it too hard and we don't want it too soft. That feels better. Now I can begin my ram's head wedging. And I'm pulling the edges in. Now I'm going to wire off one of the edges. There's no holes in that. I'm going to push that down a little bit. I'm going to make a tall wide vase and we'll start with about six and a half pounds of clay. Got to get it to stick. See it's not centered. See how my hands are wobbly? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coating it up, squeezing them together. And this will also help to condition the clay a little bit too. See, it's getting there. See how it's okay there. So now I need to work on the bottom a little bit. I'm trying to use the palms of my hands and go from the bottom to the top. If it gets too dry, add more water. Clean off the bed a little bit here. I got it nice and coned up. So now we're going to have to push it. It's nice and centered, I think. See, my hands aren't wobbling. Nice and centered. Okay, let me clean up the bat. Notice I put the water on my hands instead of on the clay. Does it, or else it'll get too wet. I'm using the heel because there's so much clay. I'm just using the heel of my um, hand. So we're going to go a little lower. I want there to be a quarter inch on the bottom. So let's check it. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, now I'm going to pull the floor out. Widen it.
press it. lessen the chances that it will crack once it gets in there. Okay, now I'm going to start on the walls. You see how I've still, I've got, um, you know, kind of messy walls here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make sure that uh, we have nice even walls and a nice wide rim to start with. is going to be nice and wide. We don't want that rim to ever go get too thin. Okay. Now I'm going to start with all this clay up here and kind of work it up towards the top. I'm not starting at the bottom yet. I'm just going to sort of pinch the clay there, make sure we have a nice even wall. And like I said, just make sure it doesn't get too thin. And if you'll notice, I'm going to make sure that we're going to, we're working from wider. We're going to pull it inward. Okay. Okay. So now that I've pulled the clay up from about right here, now I'm going to work my way down a little bit. See, there's a big ledge of clay right here. I'm going to go ahead and pinch that up. Actually, it's so big. I'm going to use my sponge. I'm just going to push it inward. I'm not going to push outward at all. I want my clay to come up and cone inward a little bit. So I'm going to keep coning it inward. It makes it a little taller. And we haven't even touched the clay on the bottom yet. So now I'm going to make a pull from the very, very bottom. Now that I've got nice, even walls from here to here, now I'm going to take my sponge, sort of make a little divot with my finger below the pot, put a little water on my hands, clean off my sponge. I'm going to work my sponge underneath, and I'm going to make my first pull. Like I said, I'm, on, I'm using the, most of the force on the sponge, working inward, and that's going to pinch that clay upward. On the inside, I'm using my finger against the, um, the pressure of the sponge so that that clay is forced upward. And I'm working, again, not just like in a straight cylinder shape, I'm trying to pull the clay to an inward position. so that it doesn't get too wobbly. Mm -hmm. Notice I haven't even thought about shaping yet. I'm just worried about the, um, just getting the height. Okay, so that was the first pull. Now I'm gonna make another little divot under the clay. So I'm going to push the clay inward on the bottom, just a little bit, push in, and then you see this ledge of clay right here? I'm gonna pull that one, pull that, you know, push it from underneath all the way up. Again, coming up and going inward. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Remember with the other hand, I'm kind of pushing the clay a little bit outward underneath the sponge so I don't get too thin. Because remember the idea is you want the bottom to be always thicker than at the top. so it doesn't get too wobbly. I'm gonna use my fingers to get the rest of that clay all the way up there. I can feel it better. And it's thinner on the top. I don't want it to get too thin. It's starting to collapse down a little bit right in there. So I'm gonna really concern myself with pushing that back in as I go up. So I'm gonna use this rib to make the walls even. This also, um, it strengthens the walls because it's compressing. I'm just gonna work my way up the piece with it. And push the walls inward. Now I'm gonna use it with this hand on the inside. Okay, just gonna work my way up. I'm sort of pressing on the inside of the clay. Like I said, this strengthens the wall. Make sure you have a nice, even consistency. I'm just gonna take my sponge, sponge out the water. So that we can avoid S cracks. Now I'm gonna take my needle, to, I mean my uh, red rib and kind of rib that. On the bottom. Sometimes I just use my thumb too. Now I'm gonna take my red rib and I'm gonna rib all the way up. Sometimes if it's too narrow of a neck, I'll hold it just like this in between my fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. Just moving it slightly up with each revolution. pushed it out a little bit with the red rib, so now I'm gonna make sure that I push it back again. Okay, so now I have nice even wall on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the top. Now that I've achieved the height I want, it's time to start shaping the vase. I want a wide bulbous vase with a tapered bottom. So I'm gonna start at the top third of the vase, widening that out with a rib on the inside while making sure the rim tapers inward. I slowly work my way down the vase to the bottom where I use the wooden rib to taper it and trim excess clay away. I don't wanna lose control of the clay as it tapers down the bottom, so I'll continue to use the wooden rib to push the clay just where I want it. If your clay is too soft and it feels like it's gonna collapse at this critical point, then just stop and let the clay dry out a little bit. Now I'm gonna compress the rim again. Now I'm gonna trim the foot. Next, I'm gonna burnish the clay with the razor rib. Is, looks like it's about 10 and a half inches tall. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe and share. I'll see you next time in the studio.